Are you having a hard time breathing? I'm having a hard time breathing. It's here. It's real. Hi everyone, it's Tom Thinney York Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another installment of our worst to best series, Radiohead. Worst to best. In this video, I'm going to be going through Radiohead's discography, their album, studio album discography, just the studio albums, and ranking them from what I feel is the worst to the best. Without further ado, let's go. Yes, for me, The King of Limbs is Radiohead's worst album. And sure, while it may not be as dated or as corny as some of their debuts, worst moments, it lands at this spot for a few reasons. One, the band's attempt at doing a full record where they try to blatantly fuse experimental rock and electronic music just fell flat on its face. The result was a bunch of unexciting, passionless performances that sound like they really should have been left to, to be forgotten on some Tom York solo effort. And two, in the grander scheme of Radiohead's discography, this album just seems so insignificant and so surprisingly short. The musical risk the band took on this record didn't really pan out. It's not a sound they ended up perfecting down the road. I mean, the closest they came to perfecting what they were doing on The King of Limbs was actually the live version of this album, which is infinitely superior to the studio album itself. In the end, The King of Limbs, to me, just kind of seems like a weird detour they embarked on that they didn't really end up committing fully to, at least not enough to, to put out a complete satisfying album. And considering what they were doing on their next record, it just doesn't seem like an essential part of the band's evolution. At least not as essential to their evolution as their debut, their starting point. Pablo Honey. It's consistently ranked as Radiohead's worst record uh, among fans, and it's not hard to see why. It may have been a perfectly acceptable alternative rock album in the 90s when it was released, but it has not aged all that well <laughs> over, over the years. Even the album's biggest track, Creep, has become a joke among Radiohead fans, among the hardcore fans, as being the entry-level Radiohead. That's the Radiohead song everyone knows that anyone can enjoy. Yes, only only Radiohead fans would create a massive running joke about the band's music being too accessible. And that's a lot of the reason why I think Pablo Honey gets so much unjust hate, because Radiohead fans are too busy glorifying Kid A and OK Computer as some kind of like gold standard of music, like they're the most experimental, groundbreaking albums of all time, and something like Pablo Honey, oh, that's just pedestrian. When in reality, the biggest sin that Pablo Honey commits is that it just had a lot in common with its contemporaries. Sure, the album is a little generic, but Ripcord and How Do You Do and Anyone Can Play the Guitar are perfectly fine alternative rock songs. In my opinion, it's not their worst record, it's perfectly respectable as a 90s rock album and as a formative moment in the band's career. Such an overrated album. Don't get me wrong, there are some perfectly fine songs and some amazing ideas on Amnesiac. But this album is essentially a glorified set of Kid A afterbirths. And while it's well known that the material here was recorded in the same session as the material on Kid A, don't let that trick you into thinking it's just as good, especially when you have blatantly unfinished and repetitive tracks all over the track listing here. The song Hunting Bears is just a guitar detour. The song Polk Pull Revolving Doors is just like a mind-numbing electronic interlude that doesn't reinforce much of anything the album has before or after it. You and Who's Army sounds like some kind of demo ballad that Tom strung together that just had like a big climactic string section tacked onto the end of it to make it sound finished. And even one of my favorite tracks on here, Morning Bell, starts like I've been teleported into a track that has already been playing for two minutes. This album constantly gets built up for being more abstract than Kid A, but only in the sense that the songs are dodgier and more obscure. In my opinion, if we're to go on the sound and the music of this album in comparison with Kid A, what happens on Amnesiac is way less adventurous, with the exception of the kind of jazzy finish the band tries to pull off at the end. I do like Life in a Glass House, though, and some of the band's best material is on this thing. Uh, Knives Out is chillingly beautiful. The groovy desert rock on I Might Be Wrong is actually pretty fantastic. And Pyramid Song, 
While that track is pretty redundant and does feel like an extended motif like many other tracks on here, uh, the track is just too emotionally potent and it, it has too great a chord progression to just deny it. I'm not denying that there are beautiful and haunting moments on this record. I'm not. It's just that despite the fact that it runs at about the same length many other Radiohead albums do, it's one of the band's most rickety releases. And it's clear that the band did their best to hide that, and I think it mostly worked, but it still just kind of feels like a B-Sides collection to me. The Benz! Um, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this album. I appreciate it and respect it as a significant moment of progression and evolution in the Radiohead discography. It's certainly a more unique listen than Pablo Honey. It is one of Radiohead's most consistent and solid, well-built records. I think the band successfully blends alternative rock with art rock on this album. Uh, also in comparison with Pablo Honey, Tom York is a much more captivating frontman. The mix is fuller, the mix is richer, the band just sounds heavier and more powerful, but I just don't see the bends as interesting as what the band would be doing down the road. A lot like Pablo Honey, the more years that go by, the less significant the album seems to my ears. Because this album, even though it is more cutting edge than Radiohead's debut, it's still packed with so many alt rockisms that uh, are growing staler and staler and staler. Case in point, the title track. And the, <laughs> there are at least a handful of songs on here where. It just sounds like Radiohead is coming through with like this real sense of swagger, like what they're doing on this album is just so ahead of the curve and so deep and I just don't feel like that's the case. In a way, I do prefer Amnesiac's haunting ambience. I do prefer Pablo Honey's rawness, how unassuming that album is in comparison with the Benz, but I do think the Benz is a more significant point in the band's career, more important to their artistic growth because it did bring them to OK Computer. A lot of fans and music writers label Radiohead as the band that defined the 2000s, and if that is the case, uh, Hail to the Thief was probably their least definitive moment of that decade. And not that I think it's a terrible album, some of my favorite Radiohead songs are on this album. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is one of the best introductions to any Radiohead album, period. The explosive second half of this track is amazing, and it's just interesting to see the band kind of evolve past the eeriness and just the, the, the abstraction of Kid A and Amnesiac and head in a direction that's more aggressive and groovier, more physical. And the ballad on the song A Wolf at the Door is probably one of the most heart-wrenching moments in the band's entire career. The issue with this album is, as many people in the past have stated, is that it's just kind of inconsistent and a little bloated, while the very cold and calculated backdrifts is a better attempt at just trying to make electronic music than many moments on The King of Limbs, uh, the, the track doesn't really do anything to support or reinforce the, the songs that surround it. And the weird, densely packed rhythms and vocals and synths on the back end of Sit Down, Stand Up stands as one of the most questionable production choices of any song in the band's career. Uh, or most genius, depends on how I'm feeling that day. I think there are a lot of great sounds and ideas on Hail to the Thief. Uh, it's just that the band doesn't really perfect them or uh, refine them here. They just kind of end up doing that later in their discography on records like A Moonshaped Pool and In Rainbows. I could pull a lot of tracks out of this album individually and say, Great track, amazing track, fantastic track, but there's just very little rhyme or reason to it as an album, and Radiohead's usually pretty good at coming through with a well-groomed, well-conceived, uh, well-flowing album. While it is more cutting edge than a lot of what the band had released early, early on, uh, it's just not that well-groomed, and I think it suffers for it. A lot. Now we're in the top half of the list, and to kick us off there, it's... Yeah. A moon-shaped pool. It's it's super new. It's super new. But the more I listen to this thing, the more it feels like a really significant part in Radiohead's discography. The more it feels like uh, one of the band's most cohesive and conceptual albums. And while sure, it's their most low-key record, it's their most subtle record, don't let that distract you from the fact that it is one of their most beautiful albums too. One of their most fully realized albums. One of their most elegant albums. I think Radiohead stirs some great emotional power on this album. It's just that that power is just so quietly displayed. It's not 
painfully obvious, but I love the way that this album just serves up all of these sad, spacey, transcendent tunes. I think also on this album, Tom flexes his muscles as a more lyrically direct songwriter, whether it be on the closing track where he's kind of lamenting the, the loss of a really important romantic relationship, uh, or on the song Burn the Witch, where the band is uh, really kind of taking a direct shot at the modern state of uh, socio-political discourse, just, you know, just kind of fallen into the trash. Also, I just cannot get over the, the creepy alien story going on on the track Dex Dark. Sure, you know, there's kind of a uniform eeriness and, uh, again, uh, kind of a very vast atmosphere to this entire album, but there's actually a lot of musical variety to this record. There are moments uh, that take on more of a folk rock flavor. Uh, the track Full Stop, one of my favorite Radiohead songs, period, uh, has a bit of a kraut rock vibe to it. The tension they build on this track is amazing. Zing, zing, zing. Not only is this album a great listen throughout, but also a fantastic return to form considering the record that preceded it. This album is a masterclass on how to write a slow burner, and I think for years is gonna to continue to be one of my favorite records in their discography. Kid A, the legendary Kid A, Radiohead's official, bold, line-in-the-sand transition from making some alt-rock and some art-rock to just going experimental rock. Working in some crazy electronics, too. Basing their songs on more abstract structures. And beginning to incorporate in their music a chilling ambience that would remain with them for pretty much their entire career afterwards. Few bands undergo such an overhaul in their sound and come out on the other end this successful. And even though I have long said that Radiohead is not one of the most experimental adventurous bands on the planet, um, the, the, the very obtuse songs that they present here on Kid A, they're not for the impatient. Because this thing is dystopian, it's dark, it's... <sighs> the song National Anthem is probably the easiest on the ears Radiohead gets on this record, but even that track is loaded with tinny, strange vocal effects and a horn freak out at the end. The song Optimistic probably contains one of my favorite vocal performances from Tom. I also love the very surreal and kind of psychedelic In Limbo. The IDM influence on the track Idiotech is awesome and so incredibly icy. And the song Motion Picture Soundtrack is very lullaby-esque and with its kind Kind of a very relaxing pump organ chords and harp runs. It's easily one of my favorite finishes of any Radiohead album. If anything holds the album back in the grander scheme of Radiohead's discography, I don't think it has the best flow from track to track of any Radiohead album. The ambient interlude Tree Finger still kind of stands out to me as you know, just a really odd detour on the record that doesn't necessarily logically flow from the preceding track. And even the songs on here that do complement each other seem kind of isolated and compartmentalized, maybe in a way that's kind of an artistic comment on how <laughs> in a vacuum the album itself feels. Uh, but regardless, I, I do think uh, it does harm the album, even if just a little bit. For sure, I could see why this album would be the favorite among many Radiohead fans. Uh, it's just not the case for me, though. Mm-hmm. We're here. In Rainbows. This album is probably not landing this high on most lists of this kind, but honestly, truly, this album is and continues to be a personal favorite of mine in Radiohead's discography. In Rainbows is a lot of things for me. It's Radiohead's most visceral, exciting, consistently explosive album. It's an album where Radiohead, 10 years after releasing easily their biggest record, are proving that they still very much got it. A lot of the ideas on this album might sound pretty similar to some of the tracks on Hail to the Thief, but it's my opinion that Radiohead went on to perfect those sounds on this record, because there are tons of moments on this record where the band is using these grooves, using this energy to reach these just bubbling points, these boiling points, uh, the, these these orgasmic peaks of sonic bliss, uh, Jigsaw falling into place, for example. And also, this record has an amazing flow. 
from the kind of scattered and punchy beats at the very start of the song 15th Step to the dreary pianos on videotape, this is a watertight 10 tracks without a single lull. There's so many exciting highs and deep, passionate, emotional lows on this album. Of the track Body Snatchers, Radiohead has not sounded this raw since Pablo Honey. And the song Nude is probably in my top five of Radiohead songs ever. Like, this track to me is just just gorgeous, beautiful, uh, tear, you know, inducing, uh, alien soul. Tom York's vocal performance here is one of his oddest, but also one of his most beautiful. What's even more amazing is that the band had been sitting on this song for such a long time. Uh, it only took this album for them to end up recording it and releasing it. The song Reckoner sounds like the band trying to write a, a trip-hop ballad from the ground up. Tom's nasal croons are heart-wrenchingly sad. And even one of the tiniest moments on this record, Faust Arp, seems to just have a, an incredible amount of significance to me. Uh, I love the finger-pick guitars on this track, the hushed vocals. With these two things, Radiohead manages to strike a great balance between being kind of folky, intimate, beautiful, and creepy. And for me, it's still so hard to listen to this record and think about it being 10 years old at this point because it still sounds to me so crisp and exotic and colorful and exciting. And that's why it's it's landing so high on this list. Here we are, here we are, here we are, here we are, the top of the list, the top of the list. Woo! Yeah, sure, this might be a popular number one pick for a lot of other lists, but I do truly feel that speaking purely from the experience of an album, an album experience, OK Computer is the closest Radiohead has come to perfection. I do think the album is a little overhyped in the grander scheme of things. I don't think it's one of the greatest pieces of music ever conceived by man. But I do think it's the greatest album in the band's discography, and certainly a crowning achievement for rock music in the 90s, because this album is such an interesting sound for rock music at this time. It's not super raw or punky or grungy like a lot of the albums were being released in this decade. Instead, it's really pristine, it's clean, it's vivid, it's almost a, a futuristic take on rock music. And in a way, it, it actually was. I think, uh, to a degree, this album was the most predictive album in Radiohead's discography, as it would go on to influence uh, the Muses and uh, the Coldplays and the Killers of the World, uh, which, you know, may maybe not uh, everybody's happy about, but I think that's a small price to pay for such a fantastic record. But, you know, it's kind of that pristine, immaculate, almost spotless sound of this album that I think is part of what makes it sound so timeless, because there's not really anything about it that kind of hooks it into, hey, here's this weird, dumb, gimmicky trend that everybody was doing at this time. In that sense, it kind of reminds me of an album like Pink Floyd's The Wall. It's just so fundamentals, 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 that what this album is doing uh, is most likely never going to go out of style. The production on this thing, it's so great. It's so rich. It's so detailed. There's such good instrumental balance on these songs. Uh, the, the groovy riffs on Paranoid Android sound fantastic. The distortion is so burning, it's so fiery. And the blissful, jangly let down uh, sounds like the band <laughs> inadvertently wrote the instrumental blueprint for almost half of the post-rock songs to be released in the 2000s. The rest of the record brings an amazing range of interesting emotions and sounds and lyrical concepts. There are tracks on here where Tom York is exploring uh, what, what seems to be uh, this, this strong sense of loneliness and isolation, uh, th these feelings of being alien. Karma Police remains to be one of Radiohead's most catchy tracks, uh, but also hilariously sinister tracks too when you read into the lyrics. And while this record is not as consistently visceral or as explosive as some other tracks in the band's discography. You know, they definitely build tension. They definitely take their time. There are a lot of subtle, sad, dreary moments on this record. But when the band finally hits you with a payoff, it fucking pays off. Albums like this are the reason that people describe music as having uh, an orgasm-like quality to it. Like at the very end of the song, Exit Music, 
<laughs> and No Surprises still stands, in my opinion, as one of the most fantastically beautiful songs in Radiohead's entire discography. I love the lullaby quality guitar lead and the pretty little glockenspiel. I mean, the track is really a combination of what, what sounds like uh, uh, someone kind of gently trying to put you to sleep, but also a little bit of Velvet Underground and maybe a touch of musical theater too. And going off from the musical theater point there, this album's really dramatic. It's very grand. It's really trying to do its best to reach beyond what seems like the limitations of music itself. Even the most blunt, straightforward, simple track on this entire album, Electioneering, sounds like it's trying to make enough noise to shake the earth down to its core. It's like listening to the band try their hardest to transcend just being a... <laughs> A group of guys making music and maybe this album is the closest Radiohead has has ever come to doing so and um, that's why it uh, is uh, in my opinion Radiohead's best record and that is going to do it for this Radiohead worst to best list everybody uh, I hope that um, you dug on this list and uh, hopefully my thoughts and ideas here made sense and maybe I influence you to check out some Radiohead records uh, that you haven't thought of checking out before, you haven't checked out before. Or maybe you're just typing in the comments right now about how much you hate me. Um, although this video is pretty long. If, if you were going to do that, you you probably did that in the first few minutes of the video and then, and then dipped out. Um, so uh, anyway. <laughs> Transition, and there you go. That uh, was the Radiohead Worst to Best. Other videos next to my head I think you should check out, and also down in the comments, taking suggestions on what artists to cover next in this series. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Seriously taking suggestions. Seriously let me know. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Forever.